I'm Vika Sony here with Acton TV and the Youth News Crew at the 2018 Acton Farmers Market. I'm really excited to see what the Farmers Market has to offer. Let's just go have a great time on this beautiful Sunday. All right, we're here at Buzz and Thrive Gardens. Hi, what's your name? My name is Patrick Hillman, owner of uh, Buzz and Thrive Gardens. We're located in uh, Lemonster, Massachusetts on uh, 136 Nashua Street. Wow, and what is it that you sell over here? We sell a variety of succulents, uh, cactus, uh, and indoor plants. So something that we can sell year round and just uh, some more unusual different varieties that people can have indoors that are just as easy to care for. Yeah, so how long have you been doing this for? Uh, the business has been open about three years. Uh, before that, I worked at a uh, botanical garden out in Boylston at Tower Hill Botanical Gardens, which uh, I was the indoor horticulturist, so I took care of a lot of this stuff and kind of transferred that over to a whole business we're doing. So, Wow, how long have you been at the Acton Farmer's Market? Is this your first year? It is, yep. We, uh, we're here every other week. Uh, it's a great market on a Sunday morning. Um, Close down the street. It's uh, a lot of great vendors here, and uh, just the community. It's it's a uh, it's a really nice market to be a part of. Oh, awesome! So you can come check out Buzz and Thrive Gardens here at the Acton Farmers Market. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Ohm Sweet Ohm B Product. Can I tell you your name? Tony Lulek. All right. And do you own this business? Yeah, it's called Little Bee High Farm. Oh, yep. Awesome. And how long have you been running it for? I've been doing beekeeping for 14 years. Beekeeping. That's really interesting. How did you get into that? I saw hives by the side of the road and was like, huh, I thought you need like a big farm to do it. And you don't. You can raise bees anywhere. You can do it actually in the, an apartment building in the, in the city. Um, and I went to bee school. All the counties in Massachusetts have bee clubs and they all have bee school. So I went to bee school 14 years ago. Was it a little intimidating when you started or did nope. you just instantly love it? Oh, I instantly took to it, yeah. I took to it. I got really, really involved with it. And, and yeah, actually I created a business and quit my day job two, two years ago to do this full time. So. That's yeah. So what are some of the really cool products we can get like when we visit your stall here? Yeah, so basically I have honey, that's the number one product. Um, I also do other products, I do handmade soaps, hand creams, lotions, lip balms, candles, anything to do with honey and beeswax. Do you take on all the production yourself? Or? I make every single thing on the table here myself, Yep, except for the honey sticks. <laughs> so how did you learn how to make all of this? Did you go to school for that as well, just no, picked it up on your just own? Just picked it up. The only class I took was a soap making class because that's a little, little complicated how to do that, so it's good to have instructions. So yeah. That's awesome. Is this your first year at the Acton Farmer's Market or no? Second year. Second yep. Year. How do you like the experience? It's a good market. Yeah, definitely a different crowd here though. Um, not a lot of honey buyers, but they love all my other products. So. <laughs> in, for, in for the interesting things. Basically. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to me. It was really nice to meet you. Yep, thank you. Fun. All right. I'm here at the um, Laszlo Family Farm Farm Direct for the Healthy Pet. And what's your name? Clark Laszlo. And is this your company? Yep. It's our farm and company. Yep. All right, so what do you make over here? So we make a full line of dog foods and cat foods and treats, and we're utilizing the whole animal. So it's the ears and the tongues and all that we make into that. We make a raw food diet and um, just kind of staying local, keeping the dog food and pet food local. That's really interesting. How did you get into that? Well, we have a small farm over in Ashby, and we raise uh, primarily pork and lamb, and certain parts don't sell, so we tried to find another avenue to, to utilize that, so the hearts and kidneys and things like that are big, excellent pet food, so we branched out and made that line, and, and we're starting to supply more. We have a little shop now in Lowell, in the mill number five, you can come to the farm, and all that, so that's kind of how it started. Yeah, that's really economical, and people are really about that right now. Um, you know, using everything, being really open about that. Um, so what are some of the products we can find here? So you have our classic, we have our chicken, our bacon, or our pork biscuits that are classic. We have single ingredient holistic uh, meats, like a chicken, beef, uh, New England smoked beef bones so the dogs can chew. And then we have a, a variety of dried products. We even do a little hamster and small animal Aww. pet food so kids don't feel bad. That's awesome. So thank you so much for talking to me. And you can come check out the, uh, the Family Farm Direct for Healthy Pet over here at the Acton Farmer's Market. Whenever we're at a farmer's market, I really like to check out a lot of the cool vegetables. We've got some fruits. There's a lot of really great organic stands. That's the benefit of coming to a farmer's market. Um, you get the freshest fruit. You get a lot of um, homegrown vendors. You get a lot of fresh farms, fresh fruits. 
Um, it's something really interesting to see, and it's something that's unique about um, where we live. I mean, a lot of places and a lot of countries don't have um, farmer's markets, and it's something that it's such a privilege to be a part of. I'm over here at Wildflower Textiles with, what's your name, please? Sue Stoddaher. All right, and is this your company, Sue? Yes, it is. It's just me. I, <laughs> I make all of these. I start with white shirts and use the batik method with melted wax. I use beeswax to draw on the fabric, and then where the wax is, um, the dye doesn't go, so that's how you make the design. And they go in usually two or three different dye baths with different colors, and sometimes the dye is painted on using a, a seaweed paste to thicken the dye. So for example, that one would have been painted on and then more wax and then another dye bath. That's really interesting. How did you learn how to do that? Um, a lot of trial and error. The first ones didn't come out very well. and. Um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of fun to try different things and see what's going to happen. You don't always know how it's going to turn out um, until you get the wax out. Yeah. And then, then that's the fun part to see what it looks like. How long have you been doing this for? About three years now. Three years? So, yeah. Is this your first year at the Acton Farmer's Market? Second year here. So, how have you been liking it? Great. It, it's really a great market. Yeah. Awesome. So you can come check out Wildflower Textiles here at the Acton Farmer's Market. I'm over here at the Ackerman Maple Farm stand here at the Acton Farmer's Market. And can you tell me your name, please? Caitlin Ackerman. All right, so is this your business? It is, yes. Wow. So where are you based out of? We are from Cabot, Vermont. Um, we come down for the weekend. We do a few markets down here. My husband does one, and I do one every day. Oh, that's really excellent. How did you guys get into this? Oh, man. We started making syrup six years ago, where we... <laughs> We bought our first piece of land and built our sugar house and started oh, sugaring. No. And he, he wants to be to interviewed too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you started it. Um, built your own farm. Yes, so six years ago, and then we just started doing markets down here on a whim, and it ended up turning out to be our full-time business. So, and so you make a lot of maple products. I noticed. Um, what are some of the really interesting products we can find at your stand? Uh, we have maple cream, which is whipped maple syrup. There's no dairy in it or anything. Uh, maple sugar which is dehydrated maple syrup, basically. And then we have barrel-aged uh, rum, whiskey, and bourbon barrel-aged maple syrup, which doesn't have any alcohol in it. And there's actually a surprise one that's coming out in a couple weeks, so. Well, we'll stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long have you been at the Axon Farmer's Market for? I think this is four years, my fourth summer, yep. How do you like it here? It's awesome, it's so nice. Um, it's one of my closer markets, so it's nice not having to drive an hour and a half to get to it. It's only about 50 minutes, so it's a lot closer, which is awesome, and it's just a really good community of people, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. So do you guys make anything else at your farm, or do you primarily deal in maple syrup? Maple syrup, yep, maple syrup. products, yep. Definitely dedicated to the maple syrup. Well, it looks amazing. I mean, I can't wait to try some of this, and thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm over here with, what's your name? Elise. And can you tell us what stand this is? Um, Valicenti Pasta Farm, so it's all homemade ravioli sauce and pasta. Wow, is this your business? Uh, no, I just worked there. <laughs> How long have you worked there for? Just this summer, so like not long. <laughs> what kind of products do you guys sell over here? Pasta, ravioli, and sauce. Sauce, cool, cool. All right, well, you can come check out the Valicenti Pasta Farm. Sorry. <laughs> um, over here at the Eisen Farmer's Market. Thank you for talking to me. I've had a lovely day here at the Eisen Farmer's Market. It's been a beautiful Sunday. I got to talk to some really interesting people. I've loved visiting the Eisen Farmer's Market. Vika Sony for Eisen TV signing off.